Good evening. Uh, ready to post another Sunday School lesson. This is uh, Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 12 through the remaining of the chapter, uh, verse to verse 21. Um, this is uh, kind of a, a tough one. I really struggle with this one. Uh, and I view it a little differently than I think just about everybody. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll explain that as we go on. But first of all, I'd like to go to Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time to look into your word. We, we pray for your spirit to guide and direct us to rightly divide your word, to lift up your name, Lord, and we pray for anyone that may not know you as their Savior, that uh, if they listen to this, they'll come to that understanding, Lord, that your spirit will draw them, your mercy be upon them, that they will accept you as your Savior, uh, as their Savior. And, uh, Lord, we pray uh, <clears throat> for each and every one of us, Lord, to be... Uh, able to take this word highly in our heart Lord and use it as a, a tool to witness for those who we meet in our everyday life again Lord we lift you up as our friend and savior our king of kings our lord of lords these things we ask in Jesus name only your will be done Lord amen um, as I said this is kind of a, a tough one and uh, like I say I, I view it a little differently than, than most people uh, J. Vernon McGee doesn't share my uh, opinion and <laughs> um you know, I've got his uh, commentary. Uh, my son gave it to me a good while back, and I looked at them from time to time. And when I was going through this, and I had, uh, I knew my opinion was going to be different than a lot of people's, but um, I looked at his, and I do differ from him on it. But uh, he could be right, and I could be wrong. But the the, the good thing is, the um, regardless of what your opinion is on it, uh, salvation is still by Christ. We, it's not something that really. Um, Affects uh, our, our belief in grace or or the, uh, salvation. It's just a, a difference of opinion on what Adam did uh, in the garden, and we want to look at that. Uh, this uh, I jotted down a few things, kind of in in review of last week. You know, we have just we're justified by the by the our faith in the blood of Jesus, and uh, He rose for our justification. Um, we know that. The Bible tells us that you know if he wasn't just, he wouldn't have rose from the dead. And so, being just and to justify, her, and that's a great thing that we have. We learn in Romans, but uh, he rose for our justification also. Uh, I don't think this chapter tells us that, but but he did indeed do that for us, and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, it's given to us, and uh, the Holy Ghost is a tremendous thing in our life. You you know, um, when the Holy Ghost, you, you're about to do something wrong, and you know God speaks to you through His Holy Ghost, and that is something that's given to the believer. Uh, people might think that we're a little bit crazy for for saying things like that, but uh, you feel that in your your uh, soul, you know, you feel it in your heart. You know that that is the leading of God. Um, we have hope, and and hope maketh not ashamed, uh, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Um, you know, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Uh, we're saved from wrath. You know, there's there's a day of wrath coming upon the world, and uh, there's a time when you're going to uh, face God if you don't know Christ your Savior at the great white throne of judgment. We're saved from that. We're saved by His life, by Jesus' life. Atonement by Jesus Christ. We're reconciled uh, while we were enemies. Not not uh, God didn't ask us to clean up and then, hey, you, you become good enough and then I'll take you. No, he, he takes you like you are. And uh, we're reconciled by the, by the death of, of Jesus. Uh, you know, we have grace wherein we stand, and uh, we have access by faith in Jesus Christ into this grace. Uh, you know, and that peace with God that we have, uh, it, it only comes if you're standing in grace. Um, I think I mentioned this last week. I, I knew a fellow that uh, struggled with that, and he made a profession of faith, and he just couldn't grasp that. Um, his salvation didn't depend on the life he lived. It did depend on the life that Christ gave. And when he finally got a hold of that, and he realized that, 
you know, that feeling of being um, inadequate and and not good enough. It was a true feeling because you're not good enough. You're never going to be good enough within yourself. And when you start trusting in what Christ done for you, instead of trusting in yourself, then you have peace with God because you're doing just what God wants you to do. You're trusting in what He done for you, and it's a free gift. And uh, that that's not an excuse. I say all the time that's not an excuse to live a, a loose life, uh, a life of sin. And Paul gets into that in the next chapter. Lord willing, we'll, we'll be in that next week. Uh, but <clears throat> that's the way we have peace with God, is just simply trusting in grace. And that will instill you to live a right life for God. But, um, you know, we can have peace with the world real easy. Uh, all we got to do is compromise on the Word of God, and the world will love you. Um, <clears throat> you know, the name it and claim it people, the... <clears throat> When people try to make everyone happy, regardless of what sins in their life, we just always oh, you need to just accept everybody. Well, we can't accept you know a sin, the sin that people commit because God doesn't accept it in His Word. We can have peace with the world like that if you want it, but you never have peace with God like that. Well, Adam and Eve one time had peace with God in the garden, and. Uh, they made some choices, and as my son said, they tried to instill in the, the grandkids, his his children, him and Dusty, they tried to instill in them the importance of choices. And uh, Adam made a choice, and that's affected each and every one of us. It's uh, everyone, uh, him and Eve and everyone after them, it's affected them. And we'll look at that, uh, just how that came about, and how I feel like it came about. It affects us, uh, and I like I say I got a little different take on this. So, yeah, if if you don't agree, I mean that's fine. I, I told my church today. I said you know we can disagree on this. It, it doesn't change the plan of salvation, not one little bit. Well, let's start at verse twelve and in, uh, in the fifth chapter of, of Romans. It says, "Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men." for that all have sinned. Now notice here, all have sinned. Uh, you know, we might point the finger at Adam and Eve and say, well, hey, you know, look, they messed up. Well, they did, but, you know, if they hadn't, I would have. All have sinned. So, what about this fellow, Adam? Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15, I'm going to read verses 21 and 22. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So we're all descendants of Adam. Um, people might say, well, I'm from China, or I'm from Russia, or, you know, wherever. Uh, there was a missionary church, um, uh, this missionary to the Philippines. Uh, I, I didn't get to meet them. I was I work evening shifts, so I didn't get to get to meet them, but um, they were from the Philippines. So people from all over the world, it doesn't matter who you are or where you came from, uh, everybody in the world is of one race, the human race, and they, we all came from Adam, so we're all of, of the blood of, bloodline of Adam. So uh, we're all connected to him that way. So what did Adam do that, that messed up things? I think we have to look back at Genesis. Uh, got another Bible here. I turned to Genesis, so I didn't have to fumble so much. But we'll look back at Genesis and and look at just what happened back in the garden. You know, they really had a great thing going in the garden. Uh, let's see where we want to read. I want to start at verse 26 and read through 31. A little background on this. But hang in there with me, if you would, please. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth, moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Now notice they were vegetarians then. And something else we're going to read in just a minute. It's really surprising. It's totally different from our world today. So they, they lived in a different environment than what we do today because the curse is on creation. Not just man's, not the only one. It's all creation. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth, creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given, notice this, every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. So the animals were eating uh, vegetation. So much different world than what we live today. We've never known anything like this. But, you know, when you read about the millennial reign, you see things are a lot different during the millennial reign. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so God has created man in his own image. Now let's look at uh, verses 8 and 9 in chapter 2. I know we're skipping over some of this, but it's, uh, it would be hard to read the whole story. But And the Lord... God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there's two trees there, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and there was the tree of life. Uh, right there in that garden uh, let's look at uh, verses 15 and through 17 and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it so man's got a job now he's not unemployed and the Lord commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou, must, thou, mayest, eat, thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now he's got this warning, this one tree. He didn't tell him he couldn't eat of the tree of life, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what is God doing here? He's protecting man from himself, from his own sin. And we'll see that in just a minute. Let's look at uh, verse 25. Um, and they were both and he's talking about uh, Adam and Eve his wife and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed so man's in this garden he's running around naked and he, he's not ashamed he, it doesn't bother him you know he's living uh, I look at it in, in like a childlike innocence and <clears throat> God uh, God's not judging him because of that you know a, a small child um they there are a lot of things they just don't know any better um adam and eve didn't have a knowledge of good and evil at this time uh it didn't seem evil to them to run around naked but um you and i would not not think to do that ourselves not today uh, some would i mean we just face it but uh some people don't bother them to do that but um, most sane people <laughs> you don't want to run around naked um, so let's look at and see what happened uh, verses 6 to 11 in chapter 3 <clears throat> uh, of course Satan comes to tempt Eve and, uh, and here's what happened she's tempted to eat this fruit she's you know, Satan tries to tell her that you know, you'll be like gods. And uh, some of that is true. He says you'll be like gods to, to know good and evil. He's making it look, look like God don't want the best for them. And um, she she's deceived by this. And when the women saw that the tree was good for food and that 
it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, Satan always makes things look good. These all look like positive things. Oh, you're going to be wise. You're going to know, you're going to be kind of like God to know good and evil. Well, that sounds like a great thing. But God has already told them, you eat of this, this fruit of this tree, you're going to die. Um, and Satan makes these things look like it's a positive thing. But uh, here's what happens. In verse 7 it says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed, sewed fig leaves together to make them aprons. Now, uh, before they were naked and weren't ashamed, they didn't know that they needed to have clothes on. Uh, but now they do. Now, as I read on here, look, God, they hear the voice of God and are afraid. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, notice what uh, a relationship they have had with God before this happened. Uh, they must, you know, it's hard to imagine just what that relationship was like, but it, it was a tremendous relationship that you and I don't experience today. Uh, that they had back then. And I think we'll have a much closer relationship with God uh, after the rapture and God takes us home. And I think we'll have a, a great reunion, uh, a great, um, not a reunion, I guess, a, um, a great relationship with God at that point that we've never known before. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam, his wife, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. Now, they know that they've done wrong. They have a knowledge now of good and evil, and they know they've made a wrong choice. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou, shouldest, that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Yeah, that's been going on for years and years, hasn't it? Uh, the man's trying to blame the woman. <laughs> that's, that's what we do, isn't it? So, Adam made a choice here. He made a choice to be responsible for his sin. When he had the knowledge of sin, then he became responsible for his sins. Before, uh, this is the way I look at this, that God was protecting him from the fact that he's, you know, he's running around like a, in a childlike innocence and God's not holding him accountable. But when he come to the knowledge of good and evil, uh, and every child comes to that point some sometime in their life. They come to a, you know a toddler runs around. Uh, they would just as soon not have the diaper on because it's uh, kind of confining, I guess. So they seem to be happier when they ha you know they're running around naked. Um, they got more freedom, you know. It's it's more comfortable. I would say, but uh, there comes a point where, and you know, it comes early in life that these ch children realize, hey, I, I need to have clothes on. Um, <clears throat> you know, Adam chose to be responsible for uh, his his sin, and in so doing, he that choice was passed on to you and I. We have the choice to, um, <clears throat> or uh, I'm sorry, we... We don't have a choice to whether we are responsible or not. We are responsible because Adam made that choice for us. That is passed on to us, to Adam. And, uh, you know, we're in the bloodline of Adam. I don't care where you're at uh, in the world, what color you are, uh, what shade of color you are. You know, they say, it's, you know, we're all just different shades of color. you got more or less skin pigment. That's, that's the difference. And regardless, you're of the human race. And if you are of the human race, you're responsible for your sin because Adam made that choice. 
to make the human race responsible. You know, everyone's sin affects someone else. Adam's sin affected us. We, you know, we are now responsible for our sin when we come to that age of accountability. Now, some think that uh, babies are born uh, either lost or saved, and uh, that a, a small child uh, <clears throat> can be lost and go to hell. Um, dying as a baby, I, I don't believe that. I think you know, like David, I think cleared that up when he said he could go to, the, he couldn't uh, bring his son back, but he could go to him. Uh, he knew his son would would be saved. Uh, if I commit a sin, it just doesn't affect me. It affects my wife, my my son, their family, the his wife, Dusty, and the grandkids, Tegan, Micah, Marley. It affects my local church. It affects the church, the overall church, the, all the born again believers, because it it sheds a bad light on on them also. What I do wrong. So if, sin just doesn't affect one person. But now, Adam had a choice whether to have the knowledge of good and evil or not. To choose, you know, he if he didn't hadn't have eaten of that that tree, and and no one had, then we would all uh, be free from the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam made that choice. You now you didn't have a choice whether you were going to have the knowledge of good and evil. You have a conscience. And uh, you didn't have a choice to, to live in this garden and not partake of that tree. Therefore, you wouldn't have the knowledge of good and evil. You didn't have that choice. When you get to a certain age, you're accountable. Um, and let's look at that just a little bit. Uh, Psalm 51.5 says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You know, when we get to an um, age other than infant age, you know, you know, we, we know we're naked. And that happens, like I said, at an early time in life. Um, there's a, a thing called willful negligence. If uh, One example, I think I used kind of used the church. I may not get it exactly the same way I did there, but... Um, Say you're working for a, a company, a factory, and they have a crane, and you, uh, you're you doing inspections on that crane. You turn in a report that it's got a bad cable and needs, needs to be changed. And they ignore that. And you keep inspecting that and say, hey, you know, that cable needs to be changed. You keep telling them you, sh you, know, you shouldn't run that crane. And uh, they, um, they willfully decide to run that crane, and then if the cable breaks and something bad happens, um, that's willful negligence because they were informed of it. Well, before Adam uh, knew he was naked, uh, God, he was living in, in, I look at it sort of like a a, a time of grace that God is uh, extending to him. He's just like the innocence of a child. He's running around <clears throat> and God isn't judging him over that because he doesn't have that knowledge. But now, that he does have that knowledge, he has to answer for it. Um, <clears throat> you know, Adam didn't have the Ten Commandments. He didn't have the law that was given to Moses, the Ten Commandments and all the rest. Um, but he had a commandment not to eat of that tree. And he was told what the consequence would be. And he, and he chose to eat of that tree. He, he was told not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, uh, you know, judgment came because he did just the opposite of what he was told. But, you know, he, God wasn't judging him for running around naked, was he? He judged him because uh, he ate of that tree and then uh, he, he was accountable, just like willful negligence. Once you are informed of something like that crane cable, if you're informed that it's bad, then you're accountable for not changing it and something bad happening. So there were people, though, other than Adam, after Adam, that didn't have the law of Moses, the law given to Moses. Let's look at verses 13 and 14. 
For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So, <clears throat> Adam didn't have the law either, <clears throat> but he was told not to eat of that tree. <clears throat> he transgressed that commandment. That was the, uh, the commandment he was given, and he messed up on that one commandment. Do you think that Adam and Eve, there were other sin in their life other than running around naked? And uh, some might say, well, was it wrong for him to be running around naked? Well, <clears throat> just like a baby that does things, they might be doing something wrong, but you don't hold them accountable for it because uh, they're a baby. They're, they're in that innocence. They don't have that knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> so God didn't judge them for what they didn't know about. But once... Once they got the knowledge that something's wrong, uh, then they're accountable. So the people who didn't have the the law that was given to Moses, uh, were they accountable for their actions? Well, I think so because God sent a flood in Noah's day. And uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But the rest, you know, and his family, but the rest of the world perished. And <clears throat> what did they have? Well, they had uh, the the knowledge of good and evil passed down to them through Adam. They that knowledge were handed down. You know, like, like I say all the time, sometimes people will say, "Well, they didn't know better." Well, why did they hide to do? <laughs> you know, a lot of times people hide to do things, and people try to get them off the hook, saying, "Well, they didn't know any better." Well, they when they hid, they kind of give give away the fact they did know better. Uh, <clears throat> what did Adam have before he ate the knowledge of the tree of good and evil? Um, I think he had a, a capacity to sin because he chose sin when he dis he chose disobedience when he ate the tree. But he had that grace that was extended to him um, <clears throat> while he was before he before he had the knowledge of good and evil. Um, you know, you wondered, did they have, was there other sins that he committed? Well, very possibly uh, there may have been other things. Maybe he lied to Eve sometime or another, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, that that's a deep question. Did he or did he not commit other sins other than just running around naked? Uh Possibly, I'm going to say, but I, I don't know that. The Bible doesn't, doesn't fill us in on that, but that's, some, that's just something to think about. Now, the, the popular view, I think that what was handed down from Adam uh, very well could be through the blood of Adam. You know, as, as Tim pointed out, the life is in the blood, and uh, Christ's blood was not through Adam. Uh, he, he had pure blood. <clears throat> so... Uh, a popular opinion, and, and this is something that McGee, uh, uh, part of his opinion about this, is that Adam's sin is imputed to everyone. And I think that's a po popular view on this, that because Adam sinned, um, that sin was uh, imputed to everyone's account after him. Well, to, to me, that's like saying, uh, if I go down and downtown and rob the bank, then my son Aaron is also a bank robber. He's guilty. Um, take him, uh, Micah and Marley are guilty. And then if they have children, they're guilty. That's like saying they all need to go to jail like I did because uh, I robbed the bank and, and they're my descendants. <clears throat> that, that's the way what that sounds like but I just can't see that it works that way I think it's more uh, like this what was handed down to us was the knowledge of good and evil we became aware of it Adam and Eve wasn't aware of it until they ate that fruit they made that decision and by them making uh, Adam it's a, Adam is the guilty one uh, according to the Bible uh, I mean Eve done wrong too don't get me wrong but uh, <clears throat> Adam is the one who is credited to it 
uh, <clears throat> I think that that knowledge is what's handed down. And we are all sinners because of that, because we've all chose sin. Not a one of us has done right. Uh, we can't point the finger back at Adam and say, well, you know, if I'd been there, I wouldn't have done it. Well, yeah, we would have, because we've done other things. <laughs> um, I think that's what we've inherited from Adam, is the knowledge of good and evil. And, uh, you know, all have sinned and death has passed upon all men because we're all responsible for our actions. Um, Adam was responsible for what he was told not to do, told not to eat of that fruit. And so all creation now is, uh, I didn't read that part in Genesis, but, you know, creation has been cursed. And uh, so here we are today. So am I right or is... J. Vernon McGee right, or maybe you've got a different opinion on it, you know, um, you study it out and, 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 you know, you figure it out if you can. These are deep things to think about. And, you know, you get back in Genesis and you read that account and you think, well, what was their life really like back then where animals were eating uh, veg uh, vegetation and, uh, you know, you read about the millennial reign when uh, those things will be taking place again. And uh, their relationship with God, what was it like? And uh, living in, in a life of childlike innocence, infant-like innocence with God is, um, you think about all these things, there's deep, deep things to think about. Uh, did Adam and Eve commit other sins other than just running around naked? That's the one that's mentioned, and they, they felt guilty after they eat of the, the fruit. So it was, uh, I know God created them that way, and um, that we t talked about that some in Sunday school. Beverly mentioned that, and uh, you know, just wondering, well, was it really wrong for them? Well, it must have been because you know they made clothes afterwards after they realized they were naked. But uh, God wasn't holding that against them because they didn't have the knowledge of it. But we had the knowledge. We they chose to have that knowledge. You didn't get to choose whether you had. You're born with that knowledge. So at a certain age, you have that knowledge. So. You, as uh, Tim pointed out, um, it's um, once someone comes to the knowledge of the gospel and rejects it, they are responsible uh, for that. So that's a scary thing. Um, but let's read verses 15 through 17. The, the good news. We, we talked about how the man has fallen. We're all responsible for our sin. We've all sinned. So, But there's the good news now. <clears throat> uh, 15 through uh, 15 through 19 I didn't I'll, I'll scribble them there but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of God and the gift of gra by grace which is by one man Jesus Christ hath, ab hath abounded unto many and not as it was by a one that sins, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. That one act that Adam did brought condemnation upon many. One, one act of disobedience. Uh, but the great thing is, but the free gift is of many offenses. We've committed, you know, I don't know about you, but I've committed many sins. But many offenses, the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Standing before God just as if I hadn't done anything wrong when I know within me that, that I have. For if by one man's offense death reigned, by one, by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the free and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men. You know, Adam has brought judgment upon us. To condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. 
So no matter how you slice or dice what we just talked about, about what happened in the garden, what Adam lost, um, no matter if you agree with McGee or you agree with me or agree with somebody else or have your own opinion, it all boils down to this. We have salvation through Jesus Christ, regardless of what you believe on on the rest of it. You know, if you, it's deep thoughts. It's I know I've brought up some deep deep stuff here, but it's good to think about some deep things at times. Uh, we may not never figure them out, all of them, but it's good to think on them, and um, we one day we'll find out who's right. And um, the great thing is that by one man, Jesus Christ, he brought salvation to all. All fallen man can have salvation. And if you don't have it today, uh, you can have it. It's simply by putting your faith and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's what satisfied God. Um, so what about the law? Uh, you know, we talked about people who in Noah's day perished and they didn't have the, the, the law to go by, but they were accountable for their, their knowledge of right and wrong. And, you know, judgment fell upon that generation. So what about the law? What did it do? Let's look at verses 20 and 21 and finish out here. And we'll, we'll look over in uh, chapter 7 uh, for just a brief moment. More of the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as... Sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through the righteousness, un through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So the law came, and it says um, that that the offense, the law entered that the offense might abound. So when you have a law that tells you not to do something, then. Uh, the offense abounds. You know, you know then not to do this. You've got it written down. They didn't have the Ten Commandments until God gave them to Moses. But still yet they knew what was right and wrong. But now that you have it in black and white, you've got a sign that says, uh, do not park, and you park there, then you get a ticket. You know, it was written. You, it, the offense abounds because it's written down there or the the speed limit or whatever it is. But let's look at chapter 7, verses 11 through 14. It talks about the law, what it did. But if the spirit of him that raised up... Oh, I'm in the wrong chapter, sorry. I turned an, an extra page here. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Therefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. So you have that commandment. You There's no, there's no denying. Is this right or wrong? There's no gray area there. It's, you've got it written down. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So the law really made sin stand out. It made it very recognizable. You had a, a black and white law written down there that you can read, you can know that this is wrong. And uh, no question, when you know, if it says no parking, that's what it means, no parking. <laughs> if you park there and you get a ticket... Tough luck for you. You know, you knew better, didn't you? Judgment came. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the great thing, like we said, is no matter how you, you look at these scriptures we just looked at, uh, salvation is available <clears throat> through Jesus Christ. And uh, I appreciate everyone that, uh, that watches these. <clears throat> I try to get around thanking everybody. Uh, sometimes I, I don't make it, but uh, I, I try to. And... Uh, if you accept Christ your Savior, let us know, church. Be glad to hear that. And uh, I'm going to get off here, and I hope each and every one has a, a good week.